Um, as we get into the Word today, I know that many of you here are moviegoers. You love going to the movies, right? Um, we didn't get to go for the pack again. And uh, Anybody here watched Love and Thunder? Raise your hand. Okay, Thor, the Thor movie, right? And so uh, I'll, I'll bring out an illustration there. I, I'll spoil some, uh, you know... <laughs> Because you saw it already. How so many of you watch it? If you, if, you're not, if you haven't seen it and you want to watch it, just close your ears or cover your ears. But uh, remember that time when Jane Foster okay, uh, showed up and he actually, she actually went, wanted to go to the new Asgard because she was hoping that Thor's hammer could heal her, heal her from her terminal illness, right? And so, um, and she was longing for healing. And... You know, of course, when, when Thor and Jane, uh, Nicole Kidman, uh, not Nicole Kidman, uh, Natalie Portman, uh, <laughs> the wrong movie, <laughs> uh, Natalie Portman uh, showed up, of course, you know, uh, Thor was excited. Jane? Do I remember, I remember that scene? Jane Foster? Right? That sounded like Cookie Monster. <laughs> uh, but, uh, Jane. Uh, you know, never mind. <laughs> Um, but, but she had hoped that the, the, the Thor, the hammer of Thor would heal her. And I, I wanted to bring that up because in every person's heart, there's a longing. She had longed to be healed. Of course, there was a longing in Thor's heart to be able to see her again, right? And so, I, again, I, I bring that up because in every person's heart, we live in a world today that we do have desires and longings. And that's exactly what I want to talk about today, longing. What does it mean to long for something? What does it mean? What, why, is, why do our hearts have longings? The delightful anticipation of certain things. And I want to ask you today, have you ever had experience a kind of longing that fills you with anticipation? Right? That there's something in your heart, I'm looking forward to this thing. Right? Like some of you maybe to be able to travel again, right? I, I hear Japan's open, but you still have to go through the tours, right? But you want to be able to go without the tour. Or how many of you are looking forward to one day we won't be wearing masks? Okay, you're longing, uh, yes, right? And to be able to, to worship without those masks, right? Uh, some of you are longing to see certain friends you haven't seen for a long time. Or I was talking to a classmate yesterday. Yeah, it was yesterday. His family's in Canada, but he's here for a while. He had to do some stuff. And so he's been longing to be able to see his family again, right? And so those kinds of things. And some of you have lost loved ones. You're longing to see them one day, okay? When the time comes, when we see them face to face, when Jesus returns or even before that, right? And so longing, okay, or yearning or desiring, craving, aspiring, Dreaming, hoping, that's what longing is, right? And so in a world that's fallen and broken, we understand that, you know, we always want something better, newer, nicer, right? There's always something we want uh, for, for the better days to come, right? In Proverbs chapter 13, verse 9, the Bible says, a longing fulfilled is sweet to the soul. How many of you understand this? When you've been longing for something, it's like, ah, Thanks be to God. You know, I got what I had wished for, I had longed for. And so we always wish, like what I said, something nicer, better, and newer, right? Better circumstances, better situations, better environment, right? Nicer, nicer place, nicer physique, right? Uh, newer, newer. You know, every sunrise is a reminder for us that His mercies are new every single morning. And that's always a fresh start when we wake up. Thanks be to God, there's always fresh starts in the morning. And so I love what uh, C.S. Lewis said in his book, Mere Christianity. And let me quote what he said. This is so powerful. He said, creatures are not born with desires unless satisfaction for these or for those desires exists. A baby feels hunger. Well, there is such a thing as food. A duckling wants to swim. Well, there is such a thing as water. If I find in myself a desire which no experience in this world can satisfy, the most probable explanation is that I was made for another world. 
Think about that for a moment. Because every single day, there are things that we long for. Every single day, there's certain things like, Lord, I had wished this happened. I had wished there was more. I would wish there was nicer, better, kinder. Whatever adjective you might want to add after that. And so in the text that we'll be in today, in Romans chapter 1, Paul was longing for something. He was longing for something and for some, for a group of people that he was, he hasn't seen for a long time. In fact, the church in Rome, he was writing to in Romans, there were, I, it's like, it's like, I want to say 27, like 27 names that he mentioned specifically in that epistle. And he was very personal because he said, I want to, I want to see these guys again. And, and, and it's fellowship with God's people that can indeed refresh a wearied soul. How many of you were refreshed just to be in the presence of, of God and with, with people today? To be able to hear worship and to, you know, to be able to hear all of us worship together. And so Paul was speaking, again, to the church in Rome. This was about 57 AD. He wrote this during his third missionary journey. And the church of Rome was birthed. And not, you know, the scholars were saying, I'm not, we're, not, we're not completely sure when and how the church in Rome was birthed. But most likely, scholars would say, that the church in Rome was, was given birth as a result of the Pentecost in Acts chapter 2. Remember, there were, there were people from Phrygia, from uh, different places, right? And so from Rome, the Jewish people who were at the Pentecost, once they met Christ, heard the gospel, they were brought back to their cities, and one of which was Rome. And then they say that the church was started as a result. So he was speaking to the people in Rome. In verse 8, he says, First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for all of you, because your faith is proclaimed in all the world. And so he says, Thanks be to God for every single one of you. And I, when I read this, I remembered our church. And I am so thankful for our fellowship here. I'm so thankful for our church here. How many of you are thankful for our church? Amen. Are, are you thankful that the Lord has pla- the Lord's planted us here? And thanks be to God for the person beside you. Look at them. Smile at them. Okay? Genuinely. Okay? So, i sorry. Wala pala. May mask nga pala. Okay? <laughs> Smile with your eyes. Right? And so... And the reason why I bring that up also is because I, you know, this, this past week we had an earthquake, right? And we have churches in Abra and Lawag and in Vigan. And I would get messages from people saying, how can we help? How can we help? And, and it's, just, it's just a, I, I'm always blown away by the way that you all respond. And, and how can we help? How can... This week, we were able to give, uh, we're, we're, we've partnered with Operation Blessing, and we were able to give 200000 for the, 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 those who were affected by the, the earthquake. And so I know many of you will continue to give some more. And so again, I just, you guys are crazy generous, and I'm grateful to God for every single one of you. And not just for the generosity, but the way that you represent Jesus wherever you are. I hear over and over stories of people who, you know, um, uh, who've, who've represented Christ in the workplace and in the campuses. And your testimonies have made a huge, huge dent in the kingdom of God, meaning that the Lord has continued to advance His kingdom as a result of your testimony. And so verse 9, the Bible says, For God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of His Son, that without ceasing I mention you, always in my prayers asking that somehow by God's will, I may now at last succeed in coming to you. And so Paul was looking forward to seeing them and there were several reasons. Number one, verse 11, he says, for I long to see you that I may impart to you some spiritual gift to strengthen you. And so that's the first thing he said. I want to see you guys because I want to impart spiritual gift. And the word that was used here, talking about longing to see It was a yearning. It's like, I want to see you so badly that it makes my heart hurt whenever I think about it. That's the the intensity of that word that was used in its original language. 
My heart hurts when I think about it because I really, really, really want to see you. And so that's what a lot of people feel today, right? There's an earnest yearning to see humans in person. Restaurants are, my wife and I were in, were in uh, Aura last night and it's like everybody was there. It's like half of Manila was in Aura, right? And so coffee shops were, were full. They were, you know, that's, a, that's your own fellowship hall right there. Um, and it was people, restaurants were packed and there's a lot of people because, you know, sure you can have uh, Zoom uh, eat together, right? But there's nothing like being able to be with each other. Yesterday, we visited one of our church members here who's giving birth uh, f- uh, for her first baby, uh, Paui and Thomas. And so they, you know, she was explaining how the ultrasound was and her journey of pregnancy. And she just recently had a, uh, an ultrasound and the baby's almost engaged and ready to come out. And while it's so nice to see the ultrasound, right, in the video, it's also, she says, I'm longing to see this baby face to face. And so in the same way that, that Paul was saying, okay, it's nice to have this technology called letter writing. That's, that was their technology then, right? But I want to be able to see you face to face. And so Paul wanted to see the church in Rome. Now, um, impart spiritual gifts. What did he mean by that? Now, it's definitely not meaning... Uh, salvation gift because he was speaking to believers. They've all been received. They've received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Um, not spiritual gifts in a sense of 1 Corinthians chapter 12 because only the Holy Spirit can bestow spiritual gift. But when he talks about some kind of spiritual gift, it was a gift that was spiritual. Okay, I know I'm, I'm just mixing up words. But what I mean by that is when they see each other there are spiritual dynamics that happen. When people come together in worship or when they come together in fellowship or when they come together, they read the word, there's something, there's a spiritual dynamic that's happening because, um, uh, you know, because of what God is doing in not just knitting of hearts, not just through the word, but just through the different dynamics that goes on, right? And so there's the benefit of coming together. Uh, the hearts, our hearts burn when we hear the word of God. I don't know if you've ever, people have come up to me sometimes and say, Pastor Paolo, I felt like you were the one, you know, like you were talking to me when you were preaching. And to that, I would answer, yeah, Pastor Lowell told me about your story. I'm kidding, okay? <laughs> I don't know your stories, all of you. I just basically, by the, by the spirit of God, I share what the Holy Spirit says uh, through the word. And so, so our hearts burn as we hear the word. Why? Because faith comes by hearing the word of God. Did you know that the idea of quiet time was just pretty recent? Like in the, kailan yung Gutenberg, uh, when was the printing press? Is it in the 17th century? Okay. And so when the Bible, when the first one that was printed was the Bible by the printing press. Right. And so nobody had their own Bibles before that. So the Word of God was preached, read. The Scriptures were read. That's why the Bible talks about meditating on the Word of God day and night. Because what you hear, you imbibe and you meditate. And so it's just in the recent few hundreds of years ago that when we had our own Bibles, which is a blessing, of course, that we get to read it. But when we hear the Word of God, something happens there. And so he says, I'm looking forward to this because spiritual gifts are imparted when we come together, right? That's the first one. The second one, to be mutually encouraged. He said in verse 12, that is that we may be mutually encouraged by each other's faith, both yours and mine. Both yours and mine. Paul acknowledges that he knows that the encouragement would be mutual, right? When you talk to friends and when you're, let's say, in your small group, right? You're in your Bible study group. When you come together and you hear testimonies, how many of you get encouraged? We all get encouraged, right? When, when somebody gets healed or when a prayer request gets answered, when, some, when the Lord provides, we get encouraged, right? Trusting God can sometimes feel like a hard and lonely road. But when you're walking and journeying with somebody, okay, we get encouraged. 
This walk is never meant to be walked alone, to be done alone. Right? I, um, I met a guy, this was pre-pandemic. His name is Kiel. And, you know, he started coming to church. I hope he doesn't mind. I'll share his story. But, uh, um, but he, I, he came over and then maybe about a couple weeks ago. I, went, I was going to meet with him to pray for him and to just, you know, hoping to minister to him. But you know what? He actually ministered to me. He told me his testimony. He shared his story. He gave me a, a, a background of what the Lord has done in his life and in his family and what God is doing in his own personal life. I won't explain all of that, but, but my point is, I came there thinking I was going to pray for him and minister to him. I got out of that meeting being thankful for that moment because he ministered to me. You see, when, when, when we come together as church family, when we meet and talk to one another, there's mutual encouragement. There, there really is. And as, I don't know what it is. It's, I know it's by the power of the Holy Spirit. It's by His grace that when we come together, mutual encouragements happen. And so William Vine, the guy who wrote the Vine's Dictionary, um, he said this, the evidence of faith in another believer is a means of comfort to the one who witnesses it. The evidence of faith in another believer is a means of comfort to the one who witnesses it. What does that mean? It's like when you hear somebody's faith, it's not, well, it's a comfort, yes, but it's such an encouragement and inspiration. That's why, let me tell you, when God does something in your life, talk to other people about it. Don't just keep it to yourself. Share it with friends. Share it with us because the ripple effect. I was just talking to Jude earlier. The, her testimony, when she gave her testimony a few weeks ago, she said people started coming and talking to me and a mom and just different, different uh, people started coming to her. And just the ripple effect of her, what God has done in her life has blessed so many that's how this works. I don't know how it all works, but God does use our stories. And the third thing he says is to preach the gospel. It's to preach the gospel. Verse 15, he says, I'm eager to preach the gospel to you who are also in Rome, right? And so he talks about mutual encouragement, right? And then now he talks about preaching the gospel. He says, I'm eager to preach the gospel to you, right? Many of us think that the gospel is our ABCs to Christianity, not realizing it's the A to Z of Christianity, right? Because we think, oh, gospel, you're a new person, you're not a Christian yet, uh, you know, I'll preach the gospel to you. But every single day, we have to understand that the gospel empowers us to live a life for Christ. When we realize what Christ has done for us, that it is finished every single day, tetelestai, that we no longer have to pay for our sins and that what He has done has now empowered us to do all that He has called us to do, then we realize this gospel needs to be preached to ourselves every single day. Life had one value for Paul. It's to do God's work and to represent Christ. Listen, you, all of you, all of us are called by Christ to be His ambassadors. Wherever you are, where God placed you, we're called to represent Him. And so if you call yourself as a Christ follower, represent Him well. I plead with you. In fact, okay, if you're not living a life, at, I want to say this with grace, but if you, are, if you are living a life far away from Jesus and you're rebelling against Him, maybe don't, throw out that label because you're going to misrepresent him. Maybe now is a good time to repent and turn around and go to Jesus so that we can say, Lord, we're following you, right? And so, but, but for Paul, for him, his desire, his longing was to preach the gospel, to live and to serve for God, serve God. That was his, he was consumed to doing that. You see, we're consumed by so many things these days. Um, I, was, I was listening to a podcast and he was saying, 
John Eldridge was talking about that and he was saying, we live life today at the speed of our smartphones. We live life at the speed of our smartphones. That, you know, a whole day passes by because we're in the bottomless pit of our screens. And last week I wasn't here. Pastor Lowell preached a wonderful word. How many of you appreciate Pastor Lowell? Right? Pastor Lowell, amazing. I listened to his word last week. And, and, and um, we were out of town because we celebrated our son's um, uh, graduation and birthday. We weren't able to do that last month because I got COVID. And so we had to postpone that and that happened last week. But we took some time snorkeling. And my wife made, us, made a comment because after being there for about two and a half hours... She said, what? That's only two and a half hours? We thought we were already spending the whole day here, right? Time slows down when we don't have our smartphones. It really does, okay? Um, And so we're inundated with all this information. And we're thinking we have to be updated with everything. But life slowed down a lot for us last week. And so we get consumed by a lot of things. But Paul said, my, I'm consumed, I'm eager, I'm longing to be able to preach the gospel. Eager connotes zeal, passion, and inclination, okay? Question, what are you eager about? Right now, if somebody asks you, if that person has a human scanner and can scan the passions of your heart today, what are you eager about right now? What would that be? I met um, a guy, his name is Mike, not really his real name because I, I don't want to reveal his real name. But I met him and, and he, I love me, meeting with Mike because he, he's, he doesn't know Christ yet. He, he says, I'm, I'm thinking about it. I'm praying, I'm, I'm not praying, but I'm thinking about it, about uh, giving my life to Jesus. And I love it because he's not, he, when he makes a commitment, he will make a commitment. And and it's, it's fun to talk to him because every after se- a sentence, there's all these different uh, four-letter words that come out, okay? Uh, the F-bombs and S-bombs, right? And so, but, but I, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't bother me because I love it because he's just being who he, he is, right? And one day I'm going to see him come to faith in Jesus. He's going to come to Christ. He's almost there. All right, I'm going to meet him again. But he's, uh, he's but, but I'm, what I'm saying is, you know, God has given us this precious message. And people need to hear it. And it's going to be so selfish for us to keep it to ourselves. Now, let me finish it up. Um, verse 16 says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. For it is the power of God for salvation. Everybody say for salvation. The gospel is for salvation. It's not for our convenience. It's not for our prosperity. It's not for other things or our dreams. It's for salvation. Because sometimes we act as if Jesus is our genie and you have to do this for me, Jesus. Right? It's for our salvation. And so last one, I'll end with this one. Um, It's not in the pericope or in the text that we're given. But fast forward to chapter 8. Paul talks to the church in Rome and he says, I long not just to see you, but I long to be with Jesus face to face. In the book uh, entitled Heaven, the Heart's Deepest Longing, um, The writer, the author, gives a quote in the first chapter. And he says, this quote, the next one. Next slide, yeah. Imagine God appeared to you and said, I'll make a deal with you if you wish. I'll give you anything and everything you ask. Pleasure, power, honor, wealth, freedom, even peace of mind and a good conscience. Nothing will be a sin. Think about this for a moment. Nothing will be a sin. Nothing will be forbidden. And nothing will be impossible for you. You will never be bored or you will never die. Only you shall never see my face. Next slide. Did you notice that unspeakable chill? 
I heard your oh. Okay. Did you notice that unspeakable chill in your deepest heart at, at those last words? Did, you, did your surface desire leap after the first part of God's deal and your deepest desire freeze in standstill shock at you shall never see my face? Your surface mind, which is in touch with your surface desires, may not admit it, but your deepest mind, which knows your deepest desires, knows it. You want God more than everything else in the world. Your heart is too restless or your heart too is restless until it rests in Him. And that's why Paul said in chapter 8, verse 18, I consider the sufferings that we have here, okay, not comparing to the glory that will come. Right? For the creation waits an eager longing for the revealing of the sons of God. And then, I skipped a few verses after that. For we know that the whole creation has been groaning together. You know that the whole creation is groaning? Groaning in the sense of earthquakes. Groaning in the sense of climate change. Groaning in the sense of pollution. All of creation is groaning together in the pains, as in the pains of childbirth until now. Not only in creation, but we ourselves who have the... The first fruits of the Spirit grown inwardly as we eagerly uh, await eagerly for adoption as sons, the redemption of our bodies. How many of you know your body's grown too? Your body's grown, okay? I played basketball yesterday. My body's groaning, okay? <laughs> and so I want to go back to mere Christianity and I'll end with this one. He says, creatures are born, are not born with desires. And I'll go back, I'll I'll jump to the last part. He says, if I find myself a desire which no experience in this world can satisfy, the most probable explanation is that I was made for another world. N.T. Wright gave a, in his book, Simply Christian, he gave four longings to every human heart, every human heart, Christian, non-Christian, young, old, rich, poor, Every human heart, he says, there's a longing for spirituality. There's a longing for justice. There's a longing for relationships and there's a longing for beauty. No matter who you're talking to, these are signposts speaking that this human heart is longing for something. Spirituality, justice, relationships, beauty. What does that mean? Spirituality. Whether you're Christian or not, there's a spiritual side in every human heart. Uh, Larry Crabb calls it, man, man is hopelessly religious. Okay? We want, we worship something, whether that's an athlete or a celebrity or ourselves. Longing for spirituality, longing for justice. When you hear a young girl raped, is raped, there's like inside of you, this cannot continue. So longing for justice, again, Christian or not Christian. Longing for relationships. We've known this during the pandemic that being isolated is so difficult and then longing for beauty. When you look at the sunset, no matter if you have the iPhone 14, 15, 35, okay, whatever the number will be now next, even if you have the nicest phone, it will not capture the beauty of a sunset as compared to you sitting right there watching the sun go down. Because there's a longing for beauty. And you know what? All these four longings are met in Christ. All these four longings are met in the gospel. Through our relationship with Jesus Christ, we've been restored spiritually. And through Christ in Calvary, justice was served. And then in Christ, we are restored relationally. And then through Jesus, our bodies will experience eternity in all its beauty. Because in that time, the Bible says, no more mourning, no more tears, no more dying. For the old order of things have passed away. Behold, the new things have come. That's the Christian hope. It's the Christian hope that we, have, we all have. And so we live life as amphibians. Okay, huh? What's that mean? You know, amphibians like, um, like let's say a frog. If you keep a frog just on the on the on the on the land, it'll die if it doesn't have water. If you put them on water, always, all the time, it'll die too, right? You and I are like amphibians. We live here on planet Earth, but we're actually 
citizens of the kingdom. That yes, we're still here, body and flesh, and yet we know that this life isn't all that there is. There's something beyond this life. As we end, Paul had a longing that I would see you impart faith, impart spiritual gift, mutually be encouraged. That you and I today, while as we are here, may the Lord impart some spiritual gift so that we could be mutually encur- be encouraged and that we would grow in our faith. Let's bow and, and let's pray. In fact, let's all stand. Let's all stand. Lord, thank you for your Holy Spirit that is here. Thank you then. Our goal is to not just to clock an obligation. Uh, We're here. We attend the church. But Lord, we want to encounter you. And so Lord, I pray as the word has been preached, Lord, let the word of God sink deep in our hearts. You know, here's what we're going to do. I actually have a prayer on on the screen I want to show you. And in the next few moments, I'm actually going to ask you to pray for somebody, the person beside you. Okay, we're, we still have a few more minutes, so don't be in a hurry to leave. But, but I want you to impart some spiritual gift to one another. Meaning, pray this prayer. Okay? Lord, I ask that you would reveal your love too. If you don't know the person beside you, introduce yourself. That you have not left or forsaken. In fact, you have been with him or her every step of the way. Let your presence overwhelm this person. Okay? I want to take a moment to do that right now. Okay? Could you face the person beside you? Just pray this prayer. If you want to add to this prayer, go for it. If, if, if the prayer, you'll just read it, and that's, but read it with faith. And there's a next slide if you can add that next slide and declare this verse over them when you pray for people it encourages the person that you're praying for but I also want to tell you that there's a spiritual dynamic that happens that the Lord encourages you to and I think when we do this with people something miraculous happens God does something in our hearts when he does that and when we do this So I want to encourage us, continue to impart, continue to pray for people, encourage them with words from scripture, right? Whether that's calling them or texting them, continue to do that because the word of God is living and it's active. It is like a double-edged sword. It will pierce the hearts. And so as we wrap our time today, okay? I pray that the Lord will fill our hearts with a longing to continue to serve Him, to be eager to preach His Word and share the love of Jesus to people. 
Lord, I thank you for everyone in this room and those who are watching online. We ask, Lord, that you would impart this spiritual gift to us so that, Lord, we can impart it to others as well. Lord, we don't discount the fact that it's the Holy Spirit who will bestow and can even now bestow a spiritual gift upon every single one of us. And Lord, as we just lift up our hands, Lord, even as we lift up our hands, we receive, Lord, the gifts of the Spirit upon us, Lord, or even activate, Lord, the spiritual gifts that's inside of us, Lord, whether that's healing or intercession or leadership or mercy or hospitality or prophetic words or, Lord, speaking in tongues or, Lord, um, miracles, Lord. Thank you, God, that you can impart even that spiritual gift so that, Lord, the body can be built up. Lord, we don't exist for ourselves. Lord, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians, you are not your own. You have been bought with a price. And so, Lord, because we have been bought with a price, we don't own ourselves. Because we've been bought with a price, Lord, we don't have uh, authority over ourselves. Jesus, you are Lord. And so, Lord, we surrender to you. We lift up our hands and we say, Lord, use us. Use us. Even as we leave this place, Lord, let, let it be that, Lord, our church family here would be a blessing to people that we will meet this week. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Well, the Lord bless you and keep you. If you need prayer, our pastors and our leaders will be here. Um, those of you who want to get connected um, are, are at the function hall B. We'll, we'll see you there. God bless you.